If you're sitting here telling me that there was no way to subdue that gentleman um, or, or detain him or to just before the firing of guns, um, then you're sitting here and you're lying to not only me, you're lying to every African American, every black person in the community because we see it over and over and over. There was multiple, if you watch the video, there was multiple moments where if they wanted to, they could have they could have tackled him. They could have grabbed him. You know, they that they could have done that. And why why does it always have to get to a point where we see the guns firing? And his family is there, the kids are there, it's it's in, it's in broad daylight. And um and who knows? I mean, if that video is not being taken by that person across the street, do we even know if we even see that video? You overused it. That's what you did. You shot him numerous times for no reason. It didn't take all that. Disregard that my kids was in the car at all. And you knew they was in there because I kept screaming that before y'all even made it to the other side of the driver's side to get him in the car. I've been yelling that the whole time. Let me get my kids. It's just, it's just, uh, quite frankly, it's just in our community. And us, uh, I know people get tired of hearing me say it, but we are scared as black people in America. Black men, black women, black kids, we are, we are terrified. <laughs> He's trying not to use his gun. Everybody, hello, hello. How are you? Hope you are doing good out there. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. A lot has happened over the last week, you guys. It's been crazy, crazy craziness. As you know, the Jacob situation, seven shots in the back, you guys, in the United States. The world is talking about it. If you guys are known, I'm Kareem Jackson. You guys are live on the set. I'm here in the Philippines Islands, you guys. And I usually help woke entrepreneurs to, you know, minimize their cluttered lifestyles, to outsource their business processes to make more money and profit while they do it. But of course, a lot of issues pertaining to entrepreneurs around the world, you guys. But of course, weekly, I like to have a guest on the show who is very important to entrepreneurs and issues that affect us, you guys. In the States, the number one question we have right now is how do I get out of here? Or how do I become an entrepreneur and then get out of here? Because a lot of folks don't have jobs, you guys. A lot of folks are wondering what to do today, the next day, how to live day to day. In the midst of all of this, there's this crazy racist crazy stuff craziness about shooting blacks and the police in the states and racism on the other hand and then trump and then of course the, um, biden and then the republicans and the democrats it is ridiculous right now but at the end of the day you guys I'm abroad. I'm an entrepreneur and I've lived all over the world, you guys. I left the States about 10 years ago and it has been a phenomenal life change for me. You guys know my story. You guys know this. But if you're abroad, if you want to like, I think it's 8.7 million of us living abroad, you guys see that crap and you're like, oh my God, what is going on? And most of you, most of us know we can vote. We can absentee vote, you guys. We can be part of this situation. We can repost. We can share. We can make sure our family knows because BS aside, if you're black or a minority expat, and you're around the world, you worry about your family. You really wonder, how are they? You see this news and you know it's crazy real. This white kid, 17 years old, goes out where this all happened and he kills two protesters and then wounds about three or four others after that. So after that freaking shooting, then there's a protest, they tear up crap, then here comes the military police and the police, National Guard, and then this kid, a kid, 17 years old, you guys, he should be freaking in school, right? But he's not. So 
He's in there and he kills protesters. By the way, FYI, white protesters protesting this treatment in the states. So now there's a there's there's civilians involved, vigilantes, and then now there's civilians that are dead, white guys now that have died for a black cause. This is like 1960 all over again. I want to introduce you to Harry Thomas. He's an honorable, honorable guy. He's so wonderful. Harry's one of the first in his family, you guys, from New York City, USA, to achieve, I think, his college degree, if I remember when we were talking personally some years back. And he's one of those breakout kids, you guys. Um, Harry was the first black American ambassador to serve in the Philippines, you guys. And he was appointed by Obama. So it was during that era. So imagine we got our first black president. They got their first black ambassador in the Philippines. The world was seeing us so diverse, so inclusive, and so everything. That was so wonderful. That was a great time. He also served in New Delhi, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, and Peru in his career, you guys. So this guy has lived his life like me abroad. Hello, hello. Good morning, Brother Harry. How are you doing? You are live, Harry Thomas. How are you, brother? I am fine, my brother. How are you? I am fantastic. Well, you look good. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going to do? Oh, we do. Black don't crack, baby. That smile don't, don't do nothing. That smile is there forever. <laughs> of course, Today we're talking about some things that affecting folks back home and since you are back home, I wanted to go ahead and get folks to understand out here what's going on both home. Can you give us a breakdown of what's really happening between the, the riots and then the protest and then now of course a lot of people that are messaging me are wondering what's going on with us being able to, to mail in ballots and vote. What do you think about that? Well, thank you. Well, I would encourage everyone to vote as you said. Uh, we have uh, strong chapters of uh, Democrats and Republicans abroad in the Philippines. They have a tradition of voting. I understand why there's some fear this year, uh, owing to Postmaster General's actions. Uh, but please, please don't let his words deter you. But I would recommend that you vote early. Send your ballot in as early as you can. As Kareem so eloquently said, uh, in terms of what's going on, I think everyone knows that we are suffering through the dual challenges of COVID-19 and uh, law enforcement's uh, attacks on African Americans, the latest being the shooting of Jacob Blake in front of his children that resulted in his paralysis. I really personally do not think much has changed other than the fact that we now see this on video and it leads to social protests. You saw that the NBA players uh, held off games for a couple of nights before deciding to resume. Some baseball teams, uh, the, my, my hometown New York Mets uh, tonight protested for 42 seconds in silence before they walked off and that's significant because the great Jackie Robinson was the first African-American allowed to play baseball, and his number mm -hmm. was 42. Um, on top of it, you have uh, NHL hockey suspended games for uh, playoff games for Thursday and Friday or Friday and Saturday. So this shows you uh, how much is affecting our pro athletes and their ability to speak out and affect change. Uh, we have to commend uh, LeBron James, who's formed a PAC uh, to help get people to vote. I commend him at the same time. I was dismayed to learn that only 20% of the NBA players are registered. So I hope in the, in the coming weeks before the deadline, they will register. I think back here out in the world, a lot of us expats, but of course our friends, our families that are not expats, that are, that are locals to the countries we're living in, are amazed and shocked at what's happening back home. This is 2020. It's not like it's 1960. So this is a whole new generation of people that maybe many people even before would think, oh, well, racism was gone in America. They hired, they, they voted Obama in, and now the world is actually shocked. I don't know if you've been around the world lately, but you see the protests globally. Go ahead. Kareem, I think the uh, what you saw uh, abroad, especially after George Floyd was tragically killed, was protests in the Philippines where people took a knee, and we commend them for that. Protests in, in Europe. At the same time, when people tried, the black Haitian minority that lives in the Dominican Republic tried to protest, they were prevented from protesting. There are many countries where people cannot protest. Um, they used the George Floyd uh, murder to 
not only show their dismay in America, but in their own nations. And uh, you saw that in Hong Kong. You saw that expats in Tokyo, Osaka, uh, Okinawa, uh, many African-American, many biracial led protests. Um, they, in Osaka, they expected 200. They had 2,500 people uh, protesting uh, what goes on in America and the challenges that the biracial community uh, faces in Japan. Uh, similarly, you saw that in France, where some of our Muslim brothers and sisters uh, suffer, uh, although they're French citizens. So you see people protesting uh, rightly the challenges we face in America and the the things that they are uh, concerned about in their own nation. I mean, I don't know what number you have currently. Maybe you can update my numbers, but my latest number was 8.7 million expats around the world. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of current sounding to you? Yes, and you're right. I think, I, again, I applaud you for encouraging them to vote, to register. This is an election like no other. I really fear that we could face a lot of trouble if President Trump is reelected, mm -hmm. especially uh, minorities, immigrants, LGBTQIA community. Uh, Filipinos, I hope they understand that they've been affected. The immigration has slowed down. It's being allowed. Visas are slowed down. Um, the cost of becoming a citizen, uh, naturalization has skyrocketed and raised those prices. All those things are barriers uh, to immigrants. Um, student visas are not being issued now uh, because of COVID, although I think they could find ways to do this. So all of this is really under the guise of we do not want brown, black, and yellow people uh, coming to America. That's what this is about. And I hope the Filipinos understand that. I think that they do. I think that it's changed for me. Like before, my show was not political at all. Um, as you know, my radio, too, it was more, you know, I'm a lifestyle magazine guy. Yes. But now <laughs> the it's actually gotten to where a new generation, meaning 40 45 and younger people are saying, what's going on? What's happening? Um, recently, I had a diplomat, uh, I call him a diplomat because we're foreign, but uh, a diplomat from Malik Young Palace, who's in media also, whose family was denied their U.S. visas, and they already had visas. And this is not a top level, like, like a dramatic, this is a regular working diplomat, you know, who was shocked, like, well, what is that about? And mind you, for them, after they pay 10,000 pesos or $250 each, right, then they get denied, they work for the palace for 20, 30 years. So I was, they're, now they're all looking, going, wait a second. So this is what the folks are protesting and talking about. And I wanted to ask you also, too, to explain more on that to folks. Usually it's black folks that they see fighting, so they really think it's a black thing. But really, if you take the color out of it in general, but even though it, you can't. But take well, that's, that hasn't been true this summer. If you look at Portland, the majority of the protesters are white. Mm -hmm. uh, when my wife and I joined the protesters outside the White House in June, the majority is multi-generational. It was multiracial, but the majority were white. The two young men who lost their lives last night in Kenosha, Wisconsin, were white. So white Americans are seeing this also as their fight to live up to our wonderful Constitution, which is something I encourage. And they, uh, uh, they've seen uh, the challenges they face. Remember what happened in the beginning of COVID. We're showing people who are Asian because they felt they could they would get COVID. They sh I hope they don't forget that. It's true. It's true because um, I, I think that a lot of them are understanding now that usually the, the, the things that are affecting us um, affect them, affect the world. And mind you, most of them are now they're realizing with the comments that, that Trump has recently said that they are brown nations. They may not have thought about that before because they're not like we are racist, you know, minded type people. But now they're realizing, oh, my God, that means us. Like, yeah, they're talking about you. So when we're fighting or we're protesting or when we're, you know, now a lot of the locals are, are saying, well, you know, where you guys need to vote? Where do you need to go? Because I'm going to tell my friend who's an expat or, or my cousin who's an expat. They're asking me because a lot more expats are looking to do that. So tell me a little more about what you think about what does voting and the protesting, um, what does that get? Like these guys that are abroad, well, again, they don't understand. I would encourage your your listeners to go on the embassy website, federal government voting website. Um, Google always has voter education programs that people can look at. But voting means you get the candidate of your choice. Um, 
like you said, um, people voted in 2008 and 2012. Frankly, the number of people, especially people of color, who voted in 2016 was way down. And that helped President Trump win a very narrow election against uh, Secretary Clinton. But he did win. And that was because people were, were a, not motivated by Secretary Clinton. Uh, they were apathetic, or maybe some did not like her. But that resulted in a very narrow win for, for our president. And the, the elections have consequences. And maybe the Filipinos did not think it would affect them, but I think they know now. Yeah, they've seen a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Filipinos are wondering, well, what's going to happen during our elections if COVID's here, for example? If America's showing us that they can't put it, get it together, and if it does come out this way or that way, no one's going to accept that it's going to be automatically questioned because of corruption or because of fraud or whatever mm -hmm. they may say. I think like Trump doesn't realize or anyone doesn't realize that's a beacon for every democracy around the world. Yeah, well, I hope that it's a landslide for Vice President Biden to eliminate any questions. Clearly, I don't know what the result will be. Uh, I think it's going to be a very close election despite Vice President Biden's lead. And optimistically, though, when you see the selection of Kamala Harris, who uh, your good friend David Youngblood introduced me to a few years ago, she represents America. She is a woman. She is half Indian, half Caribbean, uh, born in the United States, and went chose to go to an African-American university, Howard University, a great school, and pledge, uh, a.k.a. <laughs> the first and the finest sorority, as they say. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. But she represents, in the Philippines, you should look at a biracial person, a woman, an academic scholar, and she was a prosecutor. She was tough. I tell folks all the time, like you guys in Asia, for example, the Philippines, they've had female presidents a long time ago. We need to have a woman. And I guess mm -hmm. a woman of color is great because then it does send that beacon here to realize she's a woman and a woman of color. So maybe we were guided more by other countries to realize women can run the country. What's the big deal? Oh, well, clearly uh, women are very good at solving challenges, problems. They do something Men um, like us, my brother, often do not do. They listen. They're very good in collaborating, just as Filipinos are very good in working in groups. So I'm very, very supportive and appreciative of Senator Harris. Uh, but she represents the possibility. And the Indian American community is very pleased that she is running, as, as are the Jamaican American community. It's true. You know, and they are donating money and registering to to support her. The Indians already vote eighty four percent Democrat. You know, when I was in the Philippines, the uh, Obama overwhelmingly won uh, among Americans abroad. I do not know clearly what the makeup is now and who would win, but I have to encourage people to to. You know, I vote. I. I think it's a little bit mixed. I hear both. I'm surprised at how loud the Trumpers are out here, to be honest. Um, well, that's I'm, their right. You know, that's okay. And I think people have entrenched positions, and that's okay. But we lose if we don't register and we don't vote. Tell me this scenario. Back in the States right now, so as say there's there's 8.7 million that can vote, only 3 million I showed that were registered to vote on the last election, that the one that overwhelmingly voted for um, probably Obama that past election, then of course his last one with Trump, um, with Hillary Clinton, of course. But does this mailing thing, this whole post office situation, does that affect absentee ballots abroad too, or no? Um, the honest answer is I don't know. I hope not. We need a lot of vigilance in the post office. I have our post office at the embassy is run by the United States Navy. They're great people when I was there. Uh, I'm sure the sailors have rotated out, but, uh, our local employees were outstanding. I'm sure they still are. You know, we have such a large number of local employees who immigrate to America. Uh, one of my friends, Leo Campos, just written a book about Filipinos who worked in the embassy who immigrated. And she was on CNN Philippines this week. But she's become an American citizen like so many. And I, I, I'm so pleased to see them having their chance first, for many of them, their first chance to vote in an American presidential election. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And I, I, I was telling folks, remind them that many 
was a protest. A lot of folks abroad forget that because they see a black person. Mm -hmm. So they automatically think that, oh, something to do with black people, black folks are mad. And even if they understand why we're mad and they believe and they, they support us, they don't understand but why the protest. You know, they say, no, because this is how it's done. Terribly enough, this is how it's done. And a lot of those folks being able to vote, um, it comes from a protest. It wasn't given, especially women. It wasn't given to women originally. When you hear that number about the 8.7 million expats that are that are abroad, and three million of them are just registered to vote, so that's 5.7 million of us that need to vote, that need to get registered. I guess is being active in our home, back home, our, our politics back home. What can you say to get them to say no? There's 5.7 million that are not registered to vote abroad that need to be voting. First, you have to tell them how easy it is to vote, how easy it is to register, that they can choose as absentee to vote just for the President of the United States if they uh, want to go that route, or they can vote in their states. I encourage them to look on the internet to see how to do it. It's very easy. And I would tell the five million odd Americans who are not uh, registered why it is in their interest to vote. Often we say people died so you can vote, which is true. The great John Lewis took beating so people could vote and eat. But with some people that doesn't register. So what does re what does register with with you? Is does it mean that you get to travel to the United States, you get to immigrate to the United States, you get to work in the United States, or that your firm abroad has the opportunity to compete for contracts in the United States, to become an alternative supply chain to the United States, to uh, go and show your music. All these things that will help your life and your family's life. Find out what motivates them. Now, obviously, you can't do everything in, in your, your program, uh, but uh, you've been doing an excellent job of telling them uh, that they are expatriate Americans, and it is our solemn duty to vote. When you were when you were abroad, how did you vote? How did you do it? I mean, not for advice for others, not who'd you vote for, but but how did you do it? Did you vote early? Did you do it when you went back home for a vacation? You did it yeah. while you were there. You uh, like, like you, Kareem, I voted most of my life absentee. First, when I was in college in Massachusetts, I would vote. And the same thing when I was abroad. And I did it initially abroad. In those days, you would go down and uh, send a letter and request an absentee ballot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, and it worked very well. These days, you have no excuse because you have the internet. <laughs> And you can request from your states very early. Now, there's not much time left, but yes, they can just go online on the embassy website. And if you do that, you're only voting. You're going to get a ballot the embassy provides where you're only voting for the President of the United States. However, if you go, you want to do a broader job because the Senate and the House are equally as important, in my view, then you have to ask for your state or the District of Columbia to send you uh, ballots, and they, they always have. But sometimes the, the local mail gets messed up, and that's why we offer that alternative of just voting for the president. In closing, I would just like to uh, give, give Joel my best, give him a hug, a COVID hug for me. I will um, and I want to thank you for having the courage to become a success overseas as an entrepreneur and also as a broadcaster and doing, you are patriotic American. Uh, Salamat Sanyin Lahat and oh, Kita Kits. Thank you, thank you, brother. Have a good evening. You too, good night. All right, love you, brother, thank you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Hey, you guys, that was Ambassador Harry Thomas, you guys. Really fantastic brother right there. Some good insights. And I hope he gave you some clarity, you guys, from someone that you can appreciate. So, again, Cream Jackson live on the set. Have a good day, you guys.